And so uh, with those things, we understand our purpose. We understand he's empowered us. Let me see the hands of you that have been filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. You know, in John 1 and 12, those who have confessed Jesus and believe him, he says, he have given you power. Amen. So when you confess Jesus, you took your life back. You took your life back. You were empowered again. You're no longer a pawn. You're no longer to be controlled by sin and these different types of things. Now that happened in your spirit. And we've been talking about getting unstuck. We're going to deal with the three states of mind. Okay, that we are to be in. And, and when you learn how to live this life as we are learning, we're going to be continuing to learn as long as we're still walking on this earth because we don't peak and crest in God and none of us know everything. There's always more to know about God. Amen. Uh, and so that's why we go from faith to faith and glory to glory. But I want you to know you become a person of influence. Okay. Don't you get influence twisted up with the world's influence because your name ain't in bright lights and you don't have big fancy cars and, and a bunch of, bunch of materialistic things. Let me tell you what makes you a person of influence, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. I want to know some folk that can get a prayer through. Forget you drive a Bentley. I want to know you can pray and God answer you. I want to know if there happens to be some trouble, glory to God, that you know what to say and what to do when trouble shows up. I want to know, can you lay hands on the sick and they recover? I want to know, can you cast out a demon in his name? I want to know, do you have dominion over your own self? Praise God. I want to see, amen, this manifestation of, of this power that's been invoked upon us through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't care if you can sing like a mockingbird. I want to know, do you have any influence with God? I don't care how, how much you can, you, can, you can do this, how good you can do that. I, I don't care about it. I want to know, do you have any influence with God? And it's time for you to know, praise God, that God knows you, you know God, and you are a person of influence. And you need to begin practicing your influence with God. Amen. Forget about trying to impress these folk out here that don't have no influence. Amen. You you trying to trying to impress some folk that don't have your destiny. The Lord is the author and finisher of your faith. What you need to do is get yourself in position where God knows you. You know God. When you open your mouth, God answers, and you need to move at the speed of thought. Are you understand what I'm saying? Don't be praying until something happens. You need to know when I pray, it's gonna happen because I have what I say. Because I function in dominion. I function in power. I function in the authority that's been given to me as a born again believer. Glory to God. Don't be picking up all these worldly things. You hustling when you got an inheritance. You ain't got to hustle. You, you hustling when you should be in the presence of God. You ought to be praying and you out here trying to hustle. Come on. You grind and then Jesus tell us to learn how to rest. He said, rested me. Coming on. And I'm not talking about if a man don't work, he don't eat. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. They're ordered by the Lord. I need to be where I need to be, doing what I need to be doing with who I need to be doing it with. Come on. Are we good? Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Clap your hands right there. Clap your hands right there. So we got to get unstuck. We got to get unstuck. So the just, the saved, and those that need to be saved, I said people need to be saved or get saved, and we need to be demonstrating to them, mother, uh, what needs to be happening and also answer the questions of why it's not happening for them. Okay? Amen. Not judgmental, not judgmental, but sharing the truth sharing the truth, and giving them the right information, Pastor Sam, so they can make the right decisions, okay? I share with you, we begin teaching this, where there is liberty, the power to choose, you begin seeing where grace and truth is in operation or where it needs to be in operation. First coming to myself, okay? We need to be in liberty, all right? Amen? We're not under the law anymore, we're under grace under grace. Jesus brought grace and truth. 
Amen. So you can relax. You don't have to feel like someone's legislating something over you. We worship. We're worshipers. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're worshipers. We do these things because we know God loves us and we love God. Amen. Yeah. So it's liberty. And it's not until liberty is given we found out that liberty is living as we should, not as we please. Okay. And God created man with a will, the right to choose. And so these things, when you have liberty, you're going to see where people's convictions are. You're going to see where their disciplines are. You're going to see where their, where their, where their maturity is you're going to see where their, their, uh, what else did the Lord say to me? You can see where their loyalties are. God said, be ye holy for I am holy. Be committed to me for I'm committed to you. So when you're given liberty, do you choose to not be, be holy anymore? Come on now. Or, or you just put on the holy suit on Sunday. Yeah, see, but, but, but God, <laughs> oh, come on now. Yeah, yeah. Depends on who you're with. If, if you're not with, with the group that, that's saying that, you know, praise the Lord then you cussing and going on, you know? And he gives you the liberty to do that, but you need to know where my convictions are, where my, where my, where my loyalties are. What do I believe? Where's my disciplines? Amen. That's the liberty that Christ has given to us because he know that he has put in us everything we need. You have everything you need in heavenly places. You have everything that pertains to life in heavenly places. Praise God. So we begin to, to, to teach you that there are three states of, of mind a person's mind can be in. Okay. And we need to know these things. The unrighteous mind. Uh, that's the mind that has no godly influence. And many times that's that person who has not confessed Christ. Okay. And then that second state of mind is the carnal mind. And I know I'm going over these things, but you need to learn. You learn by repetition. Because we need to know what we need to do. Because won't he do it and, and dancing around and what we've been doing? I know I've seen this thing for 25, 30 years. Listen, it's not being uh, as effective in society as it should be. Meantime, you can even see it in your home. You can see it in your in your workplaces. Amen. Everybody's going to church, but 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 the immorality and the the unethical behavior ain't ain't going away nowhere. The community isn't getting any better. It's getting worse. The next generation, uh, they out there now uh, in ways that I, I don't even understand. I was telling my wife the other day, I said, I don't understand. And y'all, nobody get mad at me. I, I, I'm, 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 I'll be almost 60 and, and maybe I'm old, but y'all just tell me, I don't understand the way people dress in the day. I, I, I just don't understand. And, and what they call in fashion, I'm going, that's, 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 you know, back in the day, you were called uh, 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 this, or you were called that if you dressed like that. You That wasn't presentable. You wouldn't dare come around your parents or your grandparents dressed like that. You was in straight up, you know, I don't know, they call that fashion now and, and, and these types of things. I'm like, are you serious? So listen, if society is going in the wrong direction, it's the church's responsibility. It ain't the president. It ain't, ain't, ain't the congressman. It ain't politics. It ain't none of that. It's we who has been given dominion over what God has created to make sure that we're being good stewards and we're managing things well. It's for us as parents to know what we need to be sharing with our children, amen? And it's not, again, not from a law standpoint, we're going to be, have enough spiritual intelligence to tell them the cause and the effects. Listen, you don't want to do that because I was telling this on Wednesday, because these are things that come out of, we, we, we touched on fornication. Do you know all the things that come out of fornication? And you wonder why you're troubled and you can't get no peace and you're 
all over the place, here and there, and and different types of things. One is not pleasing to God, but it's also not good for you. It's not healthy. It's not healthy spiritually. It's not healthy physically. It's not healthy emotionally. I mean, all these things we need to have intelligent conversation. Not telling them just what not to do, but why they shouldn't do it. Amen. Why they shouldn't do it. And we're going to get in today where we're going to get into the to the blessings of being born again. We don't get into the fruit of the spirit. I mean, this is why you want to have a relationship with Christ. All the things you've been chasing after, all the things that you are desires of. Amen. This is how you begin to get them. Amen. Yeah. So um, that's that state of mind, unrighteous mind. That second state is the carnal mind. That's the mind that's unrenewed. Confess Christ. Listen, go to church when they can or when they think they should or whatever it may be, you know, but their mind is still renewed. They still don't know what to do with their time, their money, uh, their gifts, their talents, and they, and the world gets a hold to them and uh, begin to exploit them rather than, than for it to become profitable and the Lord bless them. Is that all right? Now you got to remember the blessings of Satan can look like the blessings of God when you're not in fellowship with God. Hello? All deception is not bad. It just ain't God. You can go back and you can study the scriptures when, when Satan tempted Jesus, when he came out of the wilderness, he says, I'll give you all of these kingdoms and the glory of them if you'll just bow down and worship me. If you'll just break fellowship with God. Come on now, if you break fellowship with God, you're going to go to hell with me. I'm just being real blunt. You're going to be on my team, amen, and you're going to end up, amen, in eternity with me rather than the one that created you. That's the ultimate prize, amen? But how we learn to get there is the way that we function here on earth, amen? But we have liberty, remember, we have liberty. God made it that way. He designed it that way because he wants it, you to do it because you love him, not because someone made you do it. Hello? Someone made you do it. So listen, the next mind that we dealt with was the righteous mind, okay? The righteous mind. And that's the mind of Christ that the scripture says, let that mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Y'all getting all this? Because these are the things that we've got to be able to teach people. Amen. We got to be able to teach people. Let the mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And that mind of Christ is also a mind to please God. Okay, a mind to please God. And that's the mind where we ought to get to after all. It wasn't nothing created that he didn't create, and he created it for his purpose. We talked to you about Romans 8, where it says, that, and you know that all things work together for good for them that, listen, love God, and are the called according to what? His purpose, his purpose. And so when you, when purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. And so mother, when we get to the place where I have the mind of Christ, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, famous text. I know the thoughts I have toward you, they are good and not evil so that you might get to your expected end. Well, let's really, really take that at heart. Do I know what God was thinking of when he created me? Amen. Amen. And that gets me to the purpose, why I exist. Okay. And we are a people of purpose and power and influence. Uh, but we need to know his plan for us. Okay. And that comes through divine relationships, divine relationships. So then we begin dealing with Galatians 5. Okay, because we need to know we need to know when, amen, when we're struggling and why we're struggling. And I talked to you about this, this, the we don't need to skip any gradients. People need to be born again. Why? Because the Bible says no man can see. This is in John three. No man can see, neither can he enter the kingdom of heaven except they be born again. OK, and they got to be born of the water and of the spirit. OK, so they need to get born again. They need to be spirit filled. All right. 
Some people say, well, I've been baptized. Okay, all right, I got that. Have you been spirit filled? Okay, that's something that happens subsequently to you confessing Christ and even the baptism many times, okay? Have you been spirit filled? And we're gonna talk about the fruit of the spirit today. What's going to reveal to us that I've been spirit filled? We know, okay, well, I, I, you know, the evidence of speaking in tongues, that's good, okay? That's a gift. Understand this, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. I don't know if I'm getting any higher than this. You know, I, I preach, teach. So you just, what does the Spirit of the Lord say? But I want us to get a clear understanding because words of faith, this is what we need to be doing just to keep doing stuff because it's customary and traditional and it's not doing what God wants. It's time to change some things, okay? And this is why we are where we're at and what we're doing. We're gonna be led by a spirit, all right? So uh, we're gonna know what it looks like. Just because you speak in tongues, that's good. Gifts and calls of God over our repentance. That means that that's a heavenly gift and it will function because it's divine. However, you are a spirit that houses in a body that has a soul. The unrenewed mind affects your behavior to where the way the, the gift that is in you or God has given to you and the way that you behave outside of the gift and operation doesn't align itself. And that's because of an unrenewed mind. Okay. Now your flesh, as we taught you, it wars against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And there are works of the flesh, which affect your behavior, okay? And it doesn't have to match up. This is the carnal mind. It doesn't match up with what happened to your spirit because the spirit was made perfect when you confess Christ. And if you happen to be spirit filled and you have spoken in tongues, if you don't renew your mind, okay? It, your, the way you behave, the way you live won't line up with the supernatural gift of the supernatural thing that has happened in your life. And you got people that are struggling with that. You got people that will celebrate because they can sing and they feel the spirit of God because they sing. Uh, listen, I won't attach singers, preachers, they can preach, but their life don't match up with what they're preaching. Listen, saints of God, whether you're an usher, whether you're a greeter, parking lot attendant, a deacon, uh, just, just a, a saint, uh, a saint of God, mother, um, and you do not renew your mind, the works of the flesh will cause you to misrepresent heaven. And the prayer that Jesus told us to pray was that his kingdom would come and that his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Y'all agree with me? Let's clap our hands right there. We got to have a working understanding of salvation. Okay, and many times it wasn't it wasn't taught to us. We were taught how to go to church, do church, but not be the church. So there's a lot of misrepresentation and that has to be dealt with because it has affected the influence uh, of the body of Christ on society. Okay, we good? All right, so we deal with the works of the flesh, right? We went over those. That's found in Galatians 5. So go to Galatians 5. Go to Galatians 5. And we're going to get in here. I just had to review. Bring us up the speed. There was something that we pulled out in Galatians 5 and 7. It says, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Many times you get born again and boy, you just on fire. You know, you're doing good. Glory to God, you're doing good. I know this happened to me, but because you don't know what you need to be doing, you start having evil communication, okay? Getting into environments that are carnal or, um, you know, just doesn't 
doesn't agree with what God, where God's trying to take you and you get off course, you lose your focus. Okay. You lose your focus. And then you try starting to do things we deal with this too, having a zeal, but not according to knowledge. So that is why we are working fervently is making sure that we have a working understanding of salvation that we might teach people who are struggling with this state of mind, carnality. They're born again. Sometimes they're even spirit feel, but because they have not renewed their mind, mother, they struggling. And the works of the flesh is what's separating them from experiencing the benefits of the kingdom of God. All right. Is that helping anybody? You probably can, you probably can call a few people up in your mind and say, wow, this could, this could really help. This could really you know, help someone here. I could help a loved one. I could help a family member. I can help a friend. We can help the next generation. Okay. So let's look at this. We talked about the works of the flesh. We found that in verse 17. I'm just going to read them and we're going to deal with the fruit of the spirit today because we need to know both sides of this thing. What it looks like when my mind isn't renewed. Okay, let me set up this scenario. They've confessed Christ, go to church, maybe even been spirit filled, maybe even speak in tongues. But the fact that they have not renewed their mind is causing them to not bear the fruit in their life that causes the influence and the ability to teach others. This is restoring a path to dwell in repairs of the breach and calls others to say, what must I do to live the life that you are living? Okay, here we go. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. All right. Remember, how can two walk together except they be agreed? So if you don't get your carnal mind renewed, you're going to be in disagreement. Remember, the, the carnality or the works of the flesh, that flesh is that part of man that has no divine influence on it. And it is prone to sin. It is in, it's contrary to God. It, it does. It does. It, it's not good for you. Amen. It might look good. You can be just as fine as wine. I mean, you fine as wine and, and kind, all of those types of things. But if you don't do something with that flesh, these works of the flesh is going to be in operation and it is, it is prone to sin. It is in opposition to God. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Again, teaching for the sake of being able to teach us what's going on. Uh, I have some conviction about some things. If you hadn't renewed your mind, you don't have no conviction. But because you got liberty, you do what you want to do instead of what you should do. Okay. Here we go. Works of the flesh, they're contrary. And so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law, okay? Legislation. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, okay? Fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Listen at this envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of this, which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not, everybody say shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God, okay? All of the divine things, the divine people in divine places, you will not get to experience them, okay? And ultimately in eternal life, 
because you allow the works of the flesh, okay, to be at every. And listen, you'll notice that there are more works of the flesh. And listen, if we study those, I want you to study them in your own time. Because you need to know, man, is any of this stuff working in me? so that I can renew my mind that is not working in me because I found out that this is what's hindering me. This is what's holding up my joy. This is what's holding up my peace. This is what's holding up my prosperity. This is what's holding up my relationships. Praise God, this is what's keeping me from being a person of influence. I'm selling myself short. Come on now, isn't it good to find out uh, what you don't know? You don't know what you don't know. You'll find out what you don't know. You'll be like, man, this is it. I'm putting the enemy under my feet. This ain't going to do like this no more. I'm going to beat my flesh into subjection. These things come by fasting and prayer. I'm going to spend more time with God. Shoot, I'm going to pay attention when pastor is teaching because I need to learn some things. I've been going around the mountain and, and, and stuck in some places, stuck in some feelings, some emotions, feeling some type of way towards myself, even towards others, coming out inability to forgive, able to harbor bitterness and hatred on the inside of me. That's a work of my flesh. And I've been hanging out with karma people that was pro propping me up in my mess. Come on, propping me up in my mess. I've been putting things to cope with my mess. Instead of dealing with my mess, I'm sweeping it under the rug and a little living, living it the whole lump. And now I'm just a mess, man. I, I, I got emotional roller coasters. Uh, come on now, I'm trying to, trying to, trying to uh, shop myself happy, uh, eat myself happy, looking for love in all the wrong places, trying this, trying that. When I realized if I could just comprehend the breadth, the width, the depth, and the height of God's love, amen, I could experience the fullness of God. And I'll say, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all those things that I even ask or think. Come on now. I won't spend more time praying with God. You know what happens when you spend time with God? Your flesh comes in subjection. Amen. Because seeing can glory in the presence of God. Man, come on now. You begin talking like God talks. You begin thinking like God thinks. And as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Praise God. And can I tell you something? Wealth is a byproduct of who you become, not what you can do. So you better watch getting a hustling spirit on you because you're bypassing, you becoming who you need to become. Amen. And then money only makes you more what you are. Hello. And you can see people that have hit those peaks and those crests and they got destroyed. It destroyed them because they hadn't become who they needed to become. Amen. We're going to find out. We're going to find out when this fruit of the spirit, you're going to learn, you're going to have some patience now. You're not going to be anxious for anything. You're not going to put the, the, the cart before the horse. Amen. You're going to realize that God wants me to prosper and be in hell as my soul also prospers. Praise God. Are we good? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look, but everybody say, but. I thank God there's a cancellation. See, there's a time when all we had was the works of our flesh, but there's a but here. Anybody that studied any, that means that everything was said prior to that. Amen. It's canceled. It's canceled out, Pastor said. Somebody say, thank God for the cancellation from the works of my flesh. My flesh had me all jacked up. Coming out. And before you got born again, all you could do was yield to your flesh. Matter of fact, your flesh didn't taught you a whole lot of stuff. It didn't brought you bad habits. Come on now. Bad attitudes. It separated you from God. Listen, it's kept you from getting into some places. Come on now, experiencing some things, meeting some people. Your flesh did all of that. That's why you'll be, a, you know what, praise God. I don't spend all this money on my flesh. I'm steady trying to pamper it up and and puff it up and, and, and tuck it up and do all these different type things. You know what I'm about to do? Glory to God. I'm about to put you in check. Hallelujah. I'm about to put you in check. Glory to God. Are y'all all right? I'm about to go natural. <laughs> I'm about to get in touch with the real me. Praise God. I'm about to get, I ain't trying to impress nobody. I ain't trying to perform. Glory to God. I might be in a time of fasting from people for a season. Praise God. Come on now. Yeah, 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 yeah. This has been a perfect time to consecrate yourself right now when, when these things are going on. Consecrate yourself. Amen. Take everything off. 
Amen. Get butt naked before the Lord. Y'all understand what I'm saying, right? What I'm saying is take all the mask off. Take everything off. Don't put no hair on. Don't put no makeup on. Don't put no, 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 nothing on. Don't, don't, don't dress the part. You ain't dressing the part today. I ain't dressing the part. I ain't doing none of that. Glory to God. I'm about to get in touch with the real me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm about to get in touch. With, and then you're going to realize every one or everything that's in your life that makes you put a mask on. Well, I got to do this if I go here. I got to do this if I, I, I got to talk this way if I'm talking to this person. I got to behave like this if I'm with this group. I got to pretend I'm this if I'm with that group. You start finding out all the things that has you, amen, deceiving your own self that you didn't even really come to know yourself. You still have an identity crisis. No more mistaken identity. I'm about to get in touch with the real me. And it requires the Holy Spirit to get in touch with the real you because you will find out who told Told you that like Adam and Eve amen who told you that who told you that about yourself who said that that's what you should be doing where you get that from amen where you get that from you could have some perspective about something and the Holy Ghost will say where you get that from where you get that from where that come from and it came from experience it came from your environment it came from an unhealed hurt it come from an unmet need need it came from an unresolved issue Oh, come on up in here. And the Holy Ghost is there to say, mm, 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 mm. we got to touch that right there. We got to touch that because that perspective, I'll never be that. Well, you never, 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 never. You'll be like Job. Amen. God, will call you into a conference. Where were you when I created the heavens and the earth? Where were you when I hung the stars in the sky and put the clouds up there? Where were you? Where were you? Don't you ever say never to me. Come on, don't you ever say never to me. Glory to God. I don't know if you had some old school parents. Did you ever got to, you know, you know, mama, I, I got to say, you know how we get, we start growing up. We start, as the old people say, you're smelling yourself. I brought you in this world. I'll take you out of here. Come on, get a little arrogant with God and see how that worked for you. Get arrogant where you think you, you think you, you're more than what you are and you think you know more than what you know. Get arrogant and see, don't he just start, you know, loosens, allowing some stuff to come your way. Come on now. It's, it's a good thing to just humble yourself before the Lord. Just humble yourself before the Lord and tell God, Lord, I don't know nothing. Teach me your ways and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies, knowing that you are your worst enemy. A carnal mind is your worst enemy. A carnal mind is your worst enemy. Until you get the mind of God concerning you, amen, you are your worst enemy because you begin attracting and drawing and doing things that God never intended for you to do. And you think you all that and a bag of chips because you got enough, uh, enough folk around you telling you, go, 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 go. And God's shaking his head. Ne never, never, never said any of that. Where you get that from? Where you get that from? You didn't conformed. You didn't walked away from me. You walking away from every divine thing I put in your life. And man, you ain't even adhering to my word no more. Oh, come on now. I'm talking about the works of the flesh. But the fruit of the spirit. Now this takes maturity. This takes submission. Come unto me, all that are burdened and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. This minister, Deborah, says you got to learn how to come in and say, God, I trust you with my life. I surrender. I surrender. Okay. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Then out of your heart, when you begin to say to God, teach me your ways, Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. And you see that that has a promise. Blessed is the man that keeps my ways. When a man's ways is, is ple uh, pleases God, he keeps even, even his enemies at peace with him. You find out that vengeance belongs to the Lord. You quit fighting these battles, trying to, trying to provide for yourself and all these types of things. Now hear me, I'm not talking about not working. I'm not talking about not doing what God purposed for you to do because we are our kingdom people in marketplaces. You feel what I'm saying? That's not what I'm saying, but I'm talking about doing things that God never intended for you to do. Being places God never intended for you to be and you emulating people never, God never uh, intended for you to emulate. 
Are we good? So here we go. Verse 22 in Galatians 5. But the fruit of the spirit is love. Come on. Do you know that that is the thing that is absolutely necessary in every human being? There are four things that are necessary. Your spirit, man, your life is longing for it. That is love, self-worth, security, and significance. Your spirit, your life, who you are, you absolutely have need of this. And if you don't know that being in relationship with God and having the Holy Spirit residing in you, you'll be trying to be love or you'll be trying to, to, to how, how, do, how do we say this? You'll be searching to be love instead of being love. You'll be looking for love in all the wrong places. You're looking for it to come from external things when you're supposed to be love. And once you become love, the law of attraction, the law of magnetism says you attract what you are, not what you want. And so you're dressing up all the outer things and you're attracting things to you and you're presenting yourself this way and that way, searching for love in all the wrong places. And then even when you think you've got it, there's still something missing. There's something missing because you haven't allowed this fruit of the spirit to, to, to mature in you, to, to come forth in you. Uh, yeah, it's called love. It's God's love, his love for you. And the scripture tells us in Ephesians chapter three, you got to read it. When we comprehend the breadth, the width, the depth, and the height of God's love, we begin experiencing the fullness of God. And you've got to know, I was created in his image and his likeness. And you are a little G-O-D. You become that person of power. Listen, you take your love, your life back when you get this love thing corrected in you. Oh, my. Oh, my. You get your worth back because you value your life now. You ain't trying to get receive love by performing. OK, by performing anymore. That deals with your self-worth. You're not trying to measure up. Come on out. You're not trying to get get dopamine to flow on you. Got to have how many likes, how many how many uh, Instagram followers, uh, uh, the the crowds, the the all of the things that that makes you feel a certain type of way. You stop performing because you got your love right. This fruit of love is operating in you. It's coming from the inside out. You love yourself now. This got to be helping somebody. I know it helps me. And you wouldn't realize that people that are suffering from this, they, they're still dealing with this and they, they got to learn that, man, I need to just come in, in submission to God and allow his holy presence and the spirit and the word of God to work in me, to me and through me that I deal with this area of my life because you need it. It is a basic need of every human being. As I said, I'm just teaching today because we got to have some understanding, okay? And some of you may be able to testify that, man, when I didn't know this, when this wasn't working in my life, and I had the works of the flesh, it has got me into some places. It has got me into some situations. Come on now. It has got me, listen, no, don't be entangled with the yoke of bondage. It has got me into some entanglements. I've been entangled with some things. Come on now. I, 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 I thought I loved someone and I was really lusting because lust and love can look and feel the same. It's a strong desire that many times is uncontrollable. My God. And, and it, it brought forth, it bore some fruit, some fruit of, of, of emotions, some fruit of, sometimes it bared children, it bared this, it bared that. It bared a lot of things, come on now, all because I wasn't aware. Now, thank God, God is good. You hear what I'm saying to you? God is good and his grace is sufficient. And, and we're moving forward out of that. He's healing and he's, he's strengthening us and all those good things. And it's gonna work together for our good, amen? So love is that first fruit. Listen at this one, 
joy. Joy. Let's talk about what joy is. Oh, I didn't tell you what love is. Let me tell you what that fruit of love is. Let me just go back to that. It's unselfish. It's loyal. It's a benevolent concern for the well-being of someone else. Okay. It's not the physical pleasure that comes to mind, okay, and satisfying of the flesh. And so if you don't deal with the works of the flesh, you could be literally be operating out of lust because, lust because you haven't allowed love to be formed in you. And this love comes from God. It doesn't come from an external source. It comes from God. God is love and you create in this image and in this likeness, just helping anybody. This might help a friend, a family member, a man, a child, whatever it may be. But these things have to be uh, clarified and understood. This fruit, it emulates, it, em it emanates from the inside of you and it comes from God. It's not coming from your flesh. It's not coming because your you, 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 uh, flesh is being uh, satisfied. It's not where it comes from. Okay? The next fruit is joy. Joy. Many times we're trying to buy joy because it's a happy state. And this joy comes from the place of knowing and serving God. It's the fruit that comes from a right relationship with God, knowing I'm, I'm pleasing God and God is pleased with me. This is that joy. It's not pleasure seeking. When you're into pleasure seeking, you are not in this fruit of joy. That's a work of your flesh. You're not careful. This world teaches you to pleasure seek. Okay. You need to know that I have joy and we're going to get into peace in a moment. And I have peace and I'm operating in love when you don't have to perform. Amen. You have joy just knowing that you know God and God knows you. It brings you joy. I don't have to have any external stimulant in order for me to be in this state of happiness, this state of gratitude, this state of appreciation, that's joy, okay? I don't have to perform. I don't have to, I don't have to be nowhere, be doing nothing. Are we good? Talking about dealing with the works of the flesh and this fruit of the spirit. That next fruit is called peace, oh my. Everybody's looking to have peace. It's a sense of well-being and fulfillment that comes from God and is dependent upon his presence. Jesus said, I have to go away, but I leave you peace. And the way that he left us peace is through the Holy Spirit, Gloria. The Holy Spirit is the one that causes this fruit to be birthed in you peace. Okay. This is how you begin realizing, man, I have been spirit filled because I'm bearing fruit. Not that I have gifts of the spirit, but I now dwell in, or his spirit is dwelling in me because these fruit are being born. They're being birthed in me. Okay. To be at peace is to be upright, faithful, and to uphold the truth and practice justice. Doing the right thing, the right way, okay? Being faithful. Can God depend on you? Listen at this. Can others depend on you? Oh my. When God has allowed you liberty, 
Are you going to be one way in one place and another way in another place? Or can he count you faithful? Can he entrust you with, with his word, with his wisdom? Can he entrust you, amen, with this love that he gives you, this peace that he gives you? Will you, will you uh, share what he tells you to share and, and, and be upright and, and raise a standard up? Because this is how you become a person of influence. Okay, I, I believe that there's one saying that says, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Okay, can God say that you're standing for him? Come on, because you want him to stand up for you. You want him to fight your battles. You want him to heal your body. You want him to provide things for you. But he says, listen, be ye holy for I am holy. Be loyal to me. I'm loyal to you. Be committed to me. I'm committed to you. OK. Or when there's a when you're in the midst of peer pressure, you got to become something else because of the pressure of your peers. OK. This peace it's the right relationship with others and with God. We're talking about the kingdom, we're talking about the life that God has. For. Doesn't this sound good to be in right relationship with others uh, and, 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 and with God? And when you have this, when, you, when you've been spirit filled, uh, there are times when we should have said something about something and we didn't because we've been conditioned or maybe we were just trying to keep peace uh, and these types of things. But then God troubles you and he says, because you didn't do what I wanted you to do, you don't have any peace. Sometimes you need to just simply say, I'm sorry, forgive me. Sometimes you needed to share the truth with someone and you didn't because of, of whatever it may be, you know, uh, not wanting to, to uh, you know, confront or, or something like that. But then you got to deal with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, if you start quenching the Spirit and you begin ignoring uh, what the Holy Spirit is doing, you're getting further and further away from God. Okay, and now you're allowing separation to begin to happen and you begin getting out of divine places and doing divine things and functioning with divine people. Okay, and if you're not careful, if you're not renewing your mind, the Bible says in Romans 12 too, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you uh, can show that which is good, acceptable and perfect will of God. If you don't transform, you will conform and you will be conditioned amen, to, to be tolerant, acceptable to things that God does not agree with. Clap your hands right there. Just won't wake you up. I wish I could see you. Amen. We got just a few more minutes. The next fruit of the spirit is long suffering. Everybody say, Lord, have mercy. Long suffering. This is patience. You need to know when patience is not working in you. If you're not patient, you anxious. And the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Come on now, be anxious for nothing. That means that you got to say, God, deal with this anxiousness in me. My flesh is going to get the best of me if I don't get this anxiousness off of me. Okay. Yeah, you can't be still. You can't wait. You, you, you can't, you can't. Uh, uh, you know, make wise decisions because you're anxious and, and you don't, you're not long suffering. You don't have patience. You can't endure a thing. You from one thing to the next thing. This long suffering brings forth patience, endurance. Everybody say endurance. Amen. Yeah. We're supposed to endure things like a good soldier. Yeah. Discipline. Listen to this. Character. My God. Loyal. Mm -hmm. swearing to your own hurt, sacrificial, learning how to wait. My God, glory to God, glory to God. That's maturity. Are we good? So this endurance, steadfastness, steadfastness, this is what this fruit brings about. You're reliable and faithful. God says, I can depend on you. Listen to this. Others can depend on you because you're steadfast. You're not looking for a reason to make an excuse. 
Abul Saya. Huh? You are accountable. You act responsible. Yeah, this is a steadfast. Listen, you're even forbearing. You can hold back. You don't have to feel that you've got to confront everything and anything. Come on now. And you can endure opposition. This is long suffering. Listen, and you know that all things are working for the good. Sometime when the Holy Ghost is trying to bear these fruit in you, it has to apply some pressure on you. So yes, you experience some opposition. If you didn't experience opposition, this fruit wouldn't be born. Hmm? Come on, long suffering. If you're listening to the wrong voices, come on now. It'll have you operating in the works of your flesh rather than bearing the fruit of the spirit. That's why for as many that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Glory to God. Come on now. Jesus was in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights, hungry. But when Satan suggested to him to turn those stones into bread, he said, man, don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. I'm going to eat, but it ain't going to be because you said for me to eat. Come on now, because you just conditioning me to hear your voice. Come on here. And listen, after he came out of forbearing his wilderness experience, the angels came and ministered to him. You've been giving yourself up. Come on now. Glory to God for some for, for some counterfeit stuff. It's counterfeit because you won't learn long suffering. You won't allow patience and endurance and forbearance to come in you. Come on up in here. Glory to God. Glory to God. To everything, there's a time and a season. I said, to everything, there's a time and a season. You're trying to operate outside of your season. Every seed got to fall in the ground and die. You need to die to your flesh. You need to know when the works of the flesh is operating. I'm operating out of work of my flesh, and I'm not being, I'm not being led by his spirit. God got no problem doing the best things for you. God wants his best for you, but you got to believe that. And the Holy Spirit will confirm that and affirm that in you. Okay? You trying to keep up with the Joneses. You trying to keep up with folk that don't have no, no, no legacy in God. You trying to keep up with folk that ain't submitted to God, don't have no relationship with God. Come on, look at your inner circle. What are they relationship with God? Are they going to put you in check? Or are they going to encourage you to operate in the work of your flesh? Evil communication corrupts good manners. Mm -hmm. And yes, you got the liberty to be where you want, do what you want, who you want to do it with. But know what is costing you. Long suffering. Glory to God. Glory to God. As I said, the angels came and ministered unto him. It was a divine ministry unto him. You want the divine things of God. You want what God is bringing forth in your life. And the time and the season of preparation is greater than the time of manifestation. God can do what he wants to do for you in the morning. But the quality of your preparation determines the quality of your performance. If he did it for you in the morning, what would you do and how would you behave? If you ain't even a good steward over a little, you ain't going to be a good steward over much. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We're talking about dealing with carnality. Talking about the works of the flesh versus the fruit of the spirit. We need to know the difference. We need to know what's in operation and what do I need to do concerning this. That next fruit is gentleness. Gentleness. Oh my. Not being abrasive with your actions, your speech, your touch, your conversations, your corrective action. Ah, glory. Gentleness. It's a fruit of the spirit. Ah, glory to God. Huh? Are you short fused? Hey, Amen. You're aggressive with your tone. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Y'all better shout glory up in here. 
I know the Lord is teaching us real good today because we need to know the difference because this is where the glory of God is being revealed upon us. Amen. A soft answer turns away wrath. Amen. Because you know that my voice carries weight. I don't have to be loud. I don't have to be aggressive. All I need to do is say what God is saying. And when I say what God is saying, because I've been in the face of God, I can speak in the place of God. I don't have to concern that is based upon what I do because I'll just say what he said. I know he watches over his word to perform it. I don't have to be anxious. I don't have to feel intimidated. I don't have to feel overwhelmed because vengeance belongs to the Lord. I know if I abide in him and his word abides in me, I can ask what I will and shall be given unto me. Come on. I know that I'm supposed to operate in a place of peace because I've become peace. I've become peace. Amen. Ah, this is good. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to talk about it just a little bit. Goodness, 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 goodness. Doing good, seeking to live one's life in the will of God. I ain't talking about doing good acts because, see, the world will have you doing things that say is a good thing. But you, you're not doing the will of God. You're doing good things, but it's not the will of God. And doing good and being good don't get you, amen, the, 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 the acceptance of God. They're a good person. I know they're a good person, but are they in the will of God? They doing good things. I know they're doing good things, but are they in the will of God? And so we've confused being good and doing good things with the goodness of God. God is good. Why? Because you got a new car? Because you got a new car, the devil can bless you. Because if you think that you're in the will of God and you're not, you're operating under deception and he knows, praise God, I'm going to continue, amen, uh, 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 perpetrating this fraud to them. And they're getting further and further away from God, less and less pleasing to God. Their heart becomes breached and I can, I can continue to deceive them right out of the promises of God for their life. You know what happens? You know how you deal with this? It's going to be through the gifts of the spirit. That's where we're going to go next. And that is when you have discerning of spirits, you'll know from whence did you come? From whence did you come? Amen. All right. The next fruit is faith. Faith, guys, everybody say faith. This is not the gift of faith. This is the fruit that, that, that causes you to be committed. Trusting commitment of one person to another, particularly God. It produces faithfulness. Not the ability to believe, but it produces faithfulness. Because you believe, you've been filled. And because you believe, amen, this, this this extra boost from the Holy Ghost for you to be faithful is produced in you. It causes that thing of loyalty. As I said, when there's liberty in a person's life, you can see where their convictions are. Come on, you can see where their disciplines are. You can see where their loyalties are. Okay. And this fruit of faithfulness being led by the Holy Spirit reminds you where and what you should be loyal to and faithful to. Come on now. It's trust and confidence in God, the God of your salvation, the God of every nation, the God of every generation. These things don't change. God never goes out of date. These principles, these things, it's for the for the for the for the uh, millennials or whatever you want to call it, the X, the double X, the the the, the Qs, the, the whatever you want to call it, Amen. This never gets old, mother. It's, it it is is appropriate for every creature that God created on the earth. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but His word shall always stand. What are you loyal to? 
That's what's going to qualify my relationships. I want to know what are you loyal to? Who are you loyal to? What are your convictions? What are your disciplines? What are you faithful to? Listen to this. Here's the last two, and we're out for the day. Meekness, meekness. This is a personality trait of gentleness and humility. Pride is the opposite of this. Meekness doesn't mean you're weak or passive, but it is controlled power. Because I don't have an identity crisis, I can operate in humility. I don't have to demand attention. I don't have to demand anything. I can operate in humility. Amen. I can be meek. Amen. I know that I can pray. I know that I can say. And when I pray and I say, amen, the Lord, because of my loyalty to him, because of my, 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 my commitment to him, because of my submission to him, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. This is a part of my righteousness. Oh, come on now. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Are we good? And then the last one is temperance, guys. Temperance is self-control, self-control. Hey, Caleb, self-control. I'm sober. I'm calm. Okay. I got a sober, calm approach to life. And I've mastered personal desires and passions. Sounds like I've dealt with the lust, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. This temperance. I've mastered personal desires and passions. One of the things that helps you with that is to say to God, not my will, but thy will be done. Not my will. See, when I obey his statutes and the commandments, all these blessings come on me and they overtake me. You chasing blessings when they should come over you and they overtake you. When you submit and commit Amen. To being conformed into the image of his son. I know it might take longer. Come on now. But what should it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? If your soul is in trouble. Amen. There's no amount of money. There's no thing. There's no person. Amen. That's worth your soul being in trouble. There's no place. There's no there's there's nothing that, that will deal with that thing that's internally going on on the inside of you to, to, to have love and self-worth and significance and security. I want to know that the Lord hears my voice. I want him to know that I hear his voice. That's a safe place for me. I, I need to know when I pray, the Lord answers my prayers. I need to know, mother, I don't even have to be there. I can send the word. Amen. And he heals them. Come on now. It don't matter where they are, Pastor Sam, because the Lord, amen, just as I hearken unto his voice, he hearkens to my voice because it is my desire to please him. It's my desire to do his will. I agree that God wants every man to be saved, every man to be, be committed to him, every man and woman and boy and girl to be in the will of God. He wants everyone reconciled back to him. Amen. And when you agree with that, and I'm not going to be in opposition with him because of the works of my flesh. Come on now. I'm not going to be in opposition. I, I agree with you, Lord. And therefore, my ways, I want to please you. I want to do what you want done, Lord. God, God, I put away what my selfish desires are, my goals and all those things. God, I want to know what your goals are. What do you want to do right now, God? What need is there? That, what, what, how can I serve you, Father? What, what do I need? Come on now. What, what, what do you need from me, God? I'm not asking you to do anything for me. I'm asking you, what can I do for you? You've saved me. You've healed me. You delivered me. God, what can I do for you now? Come on now, what can you do? What can I do for you now? Praise God. I've learned just to tell God, God, I sure would love to do that. Amen. Someday I just learned, God, I'd love to have one of those one day and I leave it right there. 
I leave it right there. Are y'all understanding? I just leave it right there. I'm not going to go chasing after that because I want to make sure that I'm seeking him diligently. For them that come to God must believe that he is God. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I don't want these things to be the manifestation of what I have done. I want it to be to the glory of God of him saying, this is my servant of, well, of whom I am well pleased. And these are the rewards that I've given him. I know I got rewards that are coming to me in the earth. But I also have rewards that are going to be coming to me in heaven, mother. I want to hear his voice say, well done, my good and faithful servant, both in heaven and on the earth. And listen, if I'll commit to saying that your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, not my will, but thy will be done. I know that you're going to manifest some things. I know you're going to do things and eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. Neither has it entered to the heart of man things he have of them that love him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My God, I thank God for divine people. I thank God for all of you. I thank God for the vision, the assignment. Amen. The instruction God has given to us as words of faith church. I'm excited about that. Some people, Pastor Sam, they don't have no direction. They just doing stuff, just doing anything, everything, whatever they see. They just emulating stuff. But we got a clear, solid instruction. Man, that makes my heart glad. And if we'll just give attention to these things, I guarantee you, as mothers, you pray, if we go up. All of us go up. The blessing of the Lord just flow down. Glory to God. Are we giving attention to the things of God or is our attention taken away on something else or someone else doing things? Come on now that we just want to do. Are we doing the things that God, amen, would have us to do? That's liberty. I'm doing what I should do, not what I want to do. I'm doing what you call me to do, not what I want to do. And the more that I do what I'm called to do, the more I enjoy what you call me to do. The more peace that I have, the more joy that I have. Come on now. The more fruit, the more power, the more influence that I gain. Come on now. Glory to God. Mother Irma, as we was doing things yesterday, that pastor rolled up and he says, man, I listen, I admire you. He said, he said, you have the courage to do things that most people, they want to do, but don't have the courage to do it. And, and you'll do it. You'll do it. You'll do it. Because I'm not in no box. I want to please God. I want to do what God wants. I don't need your accolades. I don't need your support. Are you understanding? I mean, I want it, but I don't have to have it. Because I know if God is for me, who can be against me? Come on. Embrace your difference. Embrace your difference. You're trying to be like other folk when God has uniquely made you. Amen. The steps of a good man are custom designed by the Lord. Amen. Get in touch with the real you. No more mistaken identity. You're not going to become something else every time you get around another group of people. Every time you get around a group of people, you become something else. Now you're doing something else. Then you lose everything you had because you're trying to do something God never told you to do. <coughs> Time out for losses, time out for gain, time out for increase. I mean, it's time for increase. It's time for fruitfulness. Somebody say, I'm ready for my fruitfulness. Oh yeah, I declare, I declare, I decree over your life. And man, you're gonna see the seed of the word that's been sown in you. It's gonna produce souls, people being healed, yokes being destroyed. People you've been praying for coming and like Nicodemus and saying, explain that to me. Explain this to me. How do I get here? How do I do this? This is what I'm going through right now. I can't seem to get unstuck. I can't seem to get past this thing. I keep struggling in this thing. I mean, they're going to be, because you're going to be gentle and you're going to be kind. They're going to they're gonna confess. They're going to open their heart up and you're not going to coddle them. You're going to tell them the truth and love. You say, these are the things you need to be. You know, you need to commit your ways unto the Lord. Come on, you need to commit your ways unto the Lord. You need to, you need to, to, to allow the Holy Spirit and, and, and stop being in disagreement. Deal with your flesh, baby. Deal with your flesh. Those are the works of the flesh. You've been called to be led by his spirit. How do I get there? Through fasting and prayer. Fasting and prayer. And fasting ain't just not eating. 
You need to stop hanging with some of the folk you hang with. Quit going with some of the places you're going. Fasting in prayer and pray unto the Lord. Cry out to the Lord, Lord, help me. Help me. My flesh is on a, on a rampage. Lord, help me. Deliver me from this thing, God. Teach me your ways, Lord God. Satisfy all of these things that are going on on the inside of me. Wash me the washing of the water of your word. When you cry out to God sincerely, my God, I guarantee you, he'll send angels. He'll send whatever he need to be. And when you're ready to become a student, a teacher will show up. Glory to God. I said a teacher will show up. Glory to God. You'll stop wanting to suffer needlessly. You'll sit your tail down somewhere and get taught what you need to know so you can live life like God intended. Come on here. Come on. These are the things that's on the Father's heart. These are the things that are on the Father's heart. He's given us everything we need to live an amazing life. And we out here scrounging. And I'm not talking about, you know, lights and glamour and all that. I'm talking about love and joy and peace and right relationships, excellent community. Amen. Strong next generation. I got grandchildren. Man, I don't want them growing up in this mess I see. The way these folk behave and the way they do it. I don't want that. And I pray you don't want it for your grandchildren. And that means we got to teach every nation and every generation what the Lord has come in. It. Jesus came to save the world. He came to preserve it until he returns. Okay. His word is spirit and his word is life. Okay. You ain't living your best life or you ain't got no word in you. Living your flesh, your, your works of your flesh and your selfish desires. That's what you live in. You're fulfilling the lust of your flesh. Y'all, we're out of time. I thank the Lord for your ears that are hearing and your spirit that are hearing what the Father's heart is concerning his creation. God loves us. He does not want us destroyed for the lack of knowledge. I committed my life to teaching, sounding out the revelation of God like a trumpet. That's what he said to me. Teach your way out. You get a burden for people. Then he gives you an instruction. And then when he gives you an instruction, you got to follow it. And now I'm thanking him for the fruit, for the fruit. Amen. From the seed of the word that's been sown in your life, in your children's life, and in their children's life, and in your families, and in your friends, and in your coworkers being a people of purpose and power and influence. That's who you are. That's who we are. Embrace our difference. We're not to be conformed to this world. We have been transformed because we have renewed our minds. Therefore, we can and will show that which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. It's going to be great marriages. Men being men, women being women, uh, prosperity, health. Do you hear me? Health, prosperity. But it's going to be God's way. It's through the washing of the water of the word, the submission of our will to God's will. I know God wants you to have a life that you couldn't even imagine. Trust him. Trust him. I hadn't lived all of the things that I will live, but I've been to other nations and I've places I never thought I would be able to go and doing things I never thought I'd be able to do. When I pray, God answers me. 
I'm not praying for this and any other. I'm praying for the souls of God's people. I'm praying that his will would be done in my life and in your life and in your children's life and in their children's lives and in your family members' lives and your neighbors and your coworkers so that our grandbabies and our children would have a place they can live in that's safe and the glory of the Lord, amen, is filling that place. Mr. Derry, that's what we got to do. And so, yes, we've come out from amongst the walls and I'm counting on you. Be that person of influence in your home, in that workplace, everywhere that the soles of your feet tread upon, reveal the glory. I'm praying that you would be sensitive to every opportunity to teach this gospel, live this gospel knowing that this is your purpose search no longer out of that a lot of things are going to going to happen amen a lot of great things are going to happen but you no longer have an identity crisis you are significant you are powerful because of the gospel that's working on the inside of you don't get caught up with this power that this world is fighting over. It will become null and void. One word from God and they done. Just one word. Keep playing. One word from God. Just one word from God. And those that think they are powerful and it ain't because of the power of God. They can be done. David said it like this, Pastor Sam, whatever you do, God, don't take your spirit from me. Mother, I want to please him. God, whatever you do, I've lived in my flesh. And now I am enjoying living in his presence. And being led by his spirit. And that's my prayer, God, whatever, don't take your spirit from me. I want to please you. Come on. I pray that you could, you could have that desire to want to please God. Because that is evidence that I have renewed my mind. I'm getting in touch with who, who, with, with who I really am. And his thoughts that he have concerning my life. I no longer toss to and fro with every wind of doctrine. I'm growing up. I'm maturing. And I'm confident. Praise God. And I'm not measuring success by the world's success. My success is measured by I am doing the will of God that he has for me in my life. Fulfilling my God-given calling and purpose as I walk this earth I will not be robbed of my destiny hallelujah so father we thank you today for your mercy and your grace your patience your long suffering you've had with us God how could you say that this is the way I want you to be if you wouldn't be able to demonstrate it to us <laughs> so God we're thankful we appreciate you so much you are a great father. You are, you, you are God. And there's no one like you. There's no other God that's greater than you. So, Lord God, we, we repent for places we, we've been that we shouldn't. Uh, times we weren't in, in agreement and submission. We just want to do your will, Lord. Our heart's prayer in obedience to what Jesus said is to pray that your kingdom will come, your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We realize, Father, that when we pray that prayer, that war between the flesh and the spirit happens. But we are committed to doing your will 
and not our will. Let your will be done and let your kingdom come. Thank you for these things, Lord. Thank you for our influence. Thank you, God, that we would be able to teach others everything you've taught us. And we praise you for the students that are showing up, the Nicodemuses, the, the ones who say, you know, I've been watching, and you know, I've been listening. And when I hear you speak, as I watch you handle adversity, it's impressive to me. Teach me those things that you've evidently learned from the word of God, from my, our father, which are in heaven. Thank you, Lord God, for these things. And the days that are ahead of us, they are great. They are great days. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I love you. Let's clap our hands for Jesus. Amen. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. I'm going to say it again. He is great and greatly to be praised. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. <laughs> he is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. I want you to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. Rejoice, thrive. Amen. Listen to the Lord. Heart. Write things down. Write things down. And just know that God's got you. Man, he loves you with an undying love. Amen. Um, please, let's worship and I give him return the Lord's tithe and give of, of his offerings. Uh, guys, we, we still got to, you know, do all the things we need to do to close this building out and moving forward. We got a new budget. We're going to be uh, uh, sowing into the lives of people. Um, helping people move forward, going to be saving, getting ready for the next move. We're going to be ready, Mother, when the Lord says this or say that. Uh, we're still going to maintain. I'm looking for a, a little office in Tupelo for us to have so that we can still uh, maintain a footprint and all those types of things okay. and do business as we need to. Mm -hmm. Come and see you. Uh, all those things. Ain't nothing changed, guys. We're just right. faith church right. virtual now. And um, we can touch city to city. This is what the Lord said. I can show it to you in the prophecy, city to city, state to state, nation to nation. Okay. Uh, pray about your loved ones. They might be in the military. They may be anywhere. They can receive this feed. Okay. I'm working on the YouTube channel. Okay. So that they can go back and they can pull it up in the archives. Pray for me on that. It's giving me a little hang up. It won't. Yeah. It's yeah. not. It's not cooperating, but I declare it is now in Jesus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay? Oh, yeah. So let's continue to tithe, continue to get back. If you are tithing and you stop whatever reasons, I don't care what it is. Don't you break your covenant with God. That's right. I don't care. You don't break covenant with those who are there that are committed to making sure your life is profitable. That's don't right. That. That's right. Don't do that. Okay. Um, uh, uh, um, I don't care if you're, if you're, if your resources have decreased a little bit, I declare that it's increasing in Jesus name. Amen. I don't care if it's $2 or $3. I don't care. You tithe off of what God provides for you in your life and he'll keep being God to your life. Yes, it will. You don't break covenant with God. You don't break covenant with divine people. You don't break covenant with divine things. There's a divine principle for the saints of God. Do you hear me? And when they're going to let the world ain't be sowing and giving and then the, how the people of God don't sow and give. Mm -hmm. They are secular businesses that know the principle of sowing and reaping. They do it and they are prosper in it. Do you hear me? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's a principle. Yes. It was given to you. But anybody that catches because God is God. Mm -hmm. and he, he it works. We see mm -hmm. it. He said it. He got to honor it. Sure does. Mm -hmm. Now the thing with yours is, is with a promise. <laughs> yeah, my Lord. With a promise, your promise of 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 health and peace and joy, mm -hmm. and keeping the devourer from taking and destroying the stuff and all of that, and and perpetuation of wealth to your children's children. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen. So please, 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 do those things not because of me, but because. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a kingdom principle, mm -hmm. uh, kingdom mm -hmm. principle that the Lord has given to us to make sure that the economy of this world never mm -hmm. affects the economy of his kingdom. 
That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Um, don't forget, Pastor Sam, pray for us. You're going to be preaching. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Great friend of mine's place with the women. Okay. Uh, King Stone, Apostle Kevin Armstrong, Melody Armstrong. Amen. Great friends of mine. I love them. Bishop, okay. where is that? It's on um, on uh, McCullough Boulevard. Okay. Mm -hmm. McCullough mm -hmm. Boulevard. Right down here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On McCullough. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, let's see. Tomorrow, thank Deacon Terry and Brother Johnny. Amen. We've been going. Uh, Tanisha came by yesterday. Help me. Oh, God. Thank you for your help. <laughs> Meek and, and Sam two and Sam one. Thank y'all for your help. Kawana came by. Thank you for your help. Praise God. And uh, I'm gonna try to button things up this week. Mm -hmm. All right, and have things out of there. And I'm excited. I'm excited about where we are. I need you to do your part. Please, please, please. Your family members, your friends, your coworkers. Um, let your life be an influence to them that they want to connect. Amen. To receive these teachings, these instructions, that their life uh, will be uh, even at more the better. We want everybody to have an amazing life. Okay. Yes. Amen. Uh, thank God, uh, Lindsay. Um, you're on. Praise God. Bershawn, God bless you. Uh, everybody that's on, we thank God for you. Okay. Yes. Today. All right. Amen. All right. Uh, let me let me stop this recording. Amen. We recorded the majority.